is the difference. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. Hi. Let us pray. Father, as we come um, deeper and deeper into your truth in the book of Daniel, Lord, we know that, you know, the enemy doesn't like it. And that uh, we need you, we need your protection against what the enemy uh, plans to do and wants to destroy and uh, kill and steal. Oh Lord, we come to you and we rest in you alone, Lord. So we don't have any worries. We don't have any We can be peaceful. Uh, to receive all that you want us to know in these end times so that our lives are, are no longer about ourselves. It's about you, your kingdom, and your love for the world. Lord, there are so many out there who are screaming and are crying out for help, for direction, because so many are really, really getting mad. Right, because they they their mind no cannot function properly. Lord God, we are living in very, very urgent situation. Um, from your point of view, Lord, from a selfish man-centered point of view, people don't care about who gets mad, who gets oppressed, depressed. Oh Lord God, but with you in our hearts. Lord, we care because you care. You care for us and through us to care for others. Lord, let the words of Daniel chapter 8 to 9 come into us so strongly, Lord, that we may continue to walk in truth and righteousness with you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's share screen. Um, all right. Um, so, Chun-Li, uh, can you uh, organize who reads next so that I don't need to call out, right? <laughs> you, you know the order, the list in front of you, okay? Yeah. All right. Well, now we are into chapter 8. Um, the first thing we need to notice is that from chapter 7 to chapter 12, Daniel was given four visions. Last week, we actually spent a long time um, on chapter 7, and that is the first vision given to Daniel. It is about the courts of heaven, and very uniquely, it is in the Aramaic language, right? It is uh, in a language that is universal at that time, right? It is like English today. Aramaic is just like English for today, right? In those days, if you don't know Aramaic, right, then, uh, you know, you cannot survive in Babylon. Now, so... Um, and chapter 7 happened, right, when Daniel was around 67 years old and he was thrown into the lion's den facing death, right? But God saved him. And in that, maybe if it is even in the, the, the uh, lion's den, that he received this vision, we don't know, right? But any one of us who are thrown into life and death situation like that, we all know that we will cling very, very close to God. Amen? Now, in chapter 8, uh, God gave Daniel another vision, second vision. This one is what we are doing tonight. is on gold and ram. But the language has now changed from Aramaic international language to the Israeli Hebrew language. Why? 
right? Well, uh, the heavenly vision from this, the from second um oh uh, okay from the second to the fourth vision um recorded in Hebrews uh, is it recorded in Hebrew and the purpose is to focus on Israel's future right it's now using their own language but what is the context? It is the collapse of Babylon and other empires. The world is collapsing. What is the future? And especially Israel is so tiny. Even today, when, when anybody talks to you about Israel, they'll tell you that Israel is so small. Maybe larger than, than Singapore, la, right? But small, right? And uh, the nations around them are collapsing. So what is the future for Israel? Now, it is a very, very important question. Now, I just came back from Singapore when, um, you know, I was watching news with my brother-in-law this morning and um, really felt the concern for Singaporeans, you know, what is their future like, you know, and all that, all that. And um, so in Daniel chapter 8, right, the future of Israel is very, very, very specific. It is for a little nation. It is for a group of people called Israelite or Jewish, right? But of course, the principle of this uh, truth would apply to everyone who loves the Lord, uh, love Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit, right? And his word. Now, let us read, let us read um, Daniel chapter 8, verses 1 and 2 in TPT, right? Well, starting with uh, Kundi, right? Hello. Yeah, I can read. Uh, Daniel 8, uh, verse 1 to 2, TPT. In the third year of the reign of King Belsajar, I, Daniel, saw a second supernatural vision. In my vision, I suddenly found myself in the fortress city of Susa, the capital of the province of Elam, standing beside the Ulai Kana. Amen. Amen. Now, let us be very clear uh, that a uh, third year of King Belshazzar, right, uh, Daniel now would be about uh, 69 years old, right, 69. Uh, and then uh, in this vision, Right, he saw a picture of himself in another land, right, in another place. Right. Where is that place? It's called uh it is actually Susa, but in the province of Elam, and by a river or a canal called Ula. Why? Now this is very interesting, right? Now, first of all, let us look at where is Susa. Now there is Susa, there is uh Elam, and um, the the canal is just nearby here, right? And where is this for today? Well, today this is uh, part of part of uh, e, uh, Iran, right? Babylon. This part is part of Iraq, uh, Babylonia. Okay, now so we are back into those areas that uh, dominate world politics in the days of Daniel. Now, the um, Persians, right? The Persians, they actually hold the second empire after Babylon, right? 
and after Persia, uh, the Greece, uh, the Greek um, Empire, and after that, the Roman Empire, right? We need to know the order very well and roughly the, the years, right? 605, right, to, to 539 BC. And then uh, when Babylon fall, that this nation, this empire is being destroyed, right? Persia came out. 539 to 331, about 200 years, all right? And they have been destroyed by the third one, now by the Greek empire, the Greece empire. They are 331 to 168, right? So it's only about uh, 100 odd years, right? 150 odd years. And then after that, um, the Greek empire is destroyed by the Roman empire, right? And all that. So we, we roughly need to know this and also understand uh, the Babylon empire has uh, the quality of gold and the Persian silver, the Greece is copper and Rome, right? Uh, is clay and iron, iron and clay. Now, in terms of the animals, right? Um, have a look at the animals and then ask one question. What kind of power what kind of power are the pictures, are the visions telling us? Right. Okay, oh, we come back to the four animals, right? Babylon, light, lion, right? But has wings, right? And Persia, a bear, right? With three ribs in the mouth and, and a lion on one side. And then the, no, the Greek Empire, is as, as like the, the leopard, huh? but you even then got four wings, right? And then Roman, wow, they put a dinosaur here <laughs> because the the Roman beast, right, is beyond reckon, beyond description, right? It's so fierce. Now, the point is this, all these beasts uh, talk about brute power and talk about power struggle. Uh, talk about uh, the kind of picture in the animal kingdom, right? Uh, how do they get their food? Use their mighty power, right? To go and kill uh, their prey. Um, so it is with that kind of uh, picture, God is describing the human civilization or human uh, races, right? That this is the kind of power struggle and power control uh, that is going to bring a lot of suffering, uh, devastation, and being devoured, being eaten up. You know, can you imagine human being eating up other human being? May not be literally, but in terms of control, right? Control them to be their slaves. Now, so with this picture in mind, let us come to an understanding of the vision. Now, the now uh, I have divided chapter eight into nine parts. Part two, chapter eight, verses three and four. Now, this is about the ram and the goat the Persian and the Greek uh, kingdoms. Now, what happened? Now, we can read the story, but it is very important to remember. God showed Daniel that just like these two uh, empires uh, be, uh, that fight each other and all those, so the violent power struggles in the last days before Jesus come back would be the same. 
Now, if we use the word power struggle, we know uh, power struggle in politics, uh, of in uh, between nations, even in the company, in the business world, and even in the family, among friends, power struggle at all different levels. The uh, the 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 warning uh, and of the danger is that wherever you have power struggle, what happens? Somebody suffer, right? Now, and that is where the injustices come. <clears throat> now, let us read again verses 3 and 4. Uh, someone to help to read. Okay, I'll read. Okay. As, I look, as I look about, behold, I saw a ramp standing on the bank of the canal. It had two long horns, one behind the other, but the one behind was longer. What I watched as the ramp charged toward the west, then the north, and then the south. With each conquest, it became even more powerful. No beast could withstand it or be rescued from its power. It did whatever it pleased. Amen. Whatever power. Amen. Uh, now, remember, right, this, uh, no, this is actually describing the second empire. No, the first one has already gone, right, by the time uh, God gave this uh, vision. Uh, now, the the point is that um, the 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 ram, right, the male, the male sheep, right, the ram, um, was described as the bear, the bear power. Now has the ram. The ram has horns. Bear doesn't have horns, right, and the ram can run, right? The ram can charge one direction to another direction, right? Now, but where does this ram come from, right? We know just now from the map, right? Susa, right? By the canal, uh, by the canal uh, of Elim, right? It is in Persia, right? the second empire, right? Now, in this empire, right, there is this um, picture uh, of, of the nation of media and empire that look like a ram, right? And have long horns, two horns, right? One bigger than the other. And as they watch, uh, as, as Daniel watch, we the the ram uh is just you no know, like charging in the air right running west north and south right now um it doesn't specifically say which country or whatever but we know that you no know, they are they are conquering right the nations around them but and especially you no know, uh the the west and the north where Babylon was, right? Persia conquered Babylon, right? And um, what is it that that is outstanding, right? That we, we need to take note of is that with every conquest, they become more powerful and that nobody can withstand its power or rescue from its power, right? Now, the point is that at that level of civilization, they were the superpower. They were the most powerful. When you have so much power, right? The conclusion is that it can do whatever it wants. It did whatever it pleased, right? So whatever power means, right, um, is is what humans might humans might will do uh, would be right in their own eyes. Um, in the human human heart, when you have power and might, 
right? We often often think that you no, know, we have we have the right. The more power we have, the more right we have. The more power we have, the more we feel we can control, right? Over those under our power, right? So, what is the center? Who is the center of their life, right? Now we all now are learning that it it is very plain that you no, know, when a human have so much power, you no, know, they become uh, the 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 center of their own life. You no, know, they took the right and the authority, right, the the governance all to themselves. Now here is where we need to really 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 reflect. When we are in the center, where is God? That is the question, right, for Daniel and for God's people, right? That is the question for uh, for Israel, right? Israel sees all these powerful nations, they are so much bigger and their military power so much greater. But Right, Daniel is showing Israel, right, God is impressing on Israel that, look, they are powerful because they took the power, right, to, to make themselves the center of their life, right? They, they use, that, use the power to inflict their power their desire on other people. So God say, when they do that, they left me out. They rejected me. In fact, they make themselves my enemy. Right? Now, just remember that. It's very simple. Just remember, because uh, empire after empire, right? Babylon, Persia, Greece, Rome, today, it's all the same. When God repeats it so many times, we are to really understand. Now, here is the ram, right? Look at what is the ram doing. The ram is using the feet uh, to trample other people, right? The the, this this goat is saying, I am the boss, right? I can do what I want, right? And uh, in the next uh, vision, we see what are they actually trampling upon? Are they just trampling, stepping over nations, people? What are they stepping upon, right? Um, the next a vision we will see. Now, the development of the little horn of the goat, right? Now, just now we talk about the, the ram, right? In verses 1 to 7, the ram, the middle Persian empire, right? Now, that is the ram, and there is the goat, a he goat, um, and uh, verses 5 to 8, that is the Greek empire. And that is here is Daniel, right, by the river. He is not there. He only saw himself in the vision, right, uh, like that. Now, the third part, verses 5 to 8. Now, the arrogant goal knocked the ram out, but God removed the goal. Right? Let us read uh, TPT. Uh, Dundoy, uh, Dun Dundo, could you could you do it for us? Can I read? Yes, please. I I saw him. Is that the one? As I consider Daniel eight I... five to eight. Daniel 8, uh, verse 5 to 8. 
as I consider what is all me, I saw a male god come rushing from the west. Hello. Rushing across the whole earth. Ah, I read this, yeah. As I considered what it all Sorry. As I considered what it is all meant, I saw a male goat come rushing from the west, racing across the whole earth without touching the ground. He had a single prominent horn on his forehead. The goat came up to the two-horned ramp that I saw standing beside the canal and rushed at it with savage savage falls. Then I saw him reach the ram and attack it with furious blows. He smashed it so hard that it broke off its two horns, for the ram had no power to withstand it. The goat knocked the ram to the ground and trampled it down, and there was no one to rescue the ram from its power. At the very peak of his power, his big horn abruptly snapped off. In its place, Four prominent horns came up and each pointing to a different direction. Amen. 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 Now, this is the second part uh, of the vision. The first part was the ram. Now it's the goat. Now, what is this goat doing? Well, the first thing is that this goat is rushing, is racing across the whole earth. Now it's getting more international, right? But look at that, without touching the ground. In other words, it can rush so quickly, right? Now, and it has a one prominent horn, right? On its forehead. So goat uh, is a very strange goat, right? The goat came up to the two horn ram, right? And crush it, right? destroy it, right? And what happened? It smashed it so hard, the horns are broken, and it, it completely uh, was uh, down and out, right? Flat on the ground. And so uh, it's being trampled upon, right? And uh, the, the picture we need to understand is that you no, know, there is a power struggle and um, no, the no, the ram that uh, used to be so powerful, nobody can beat it. Now, met with a challenger that is more powerful, and now the powerful ram is suffering, right? It's being trampled upon, right? And what happened to the goat? That the goat, the goat, goat grew very arrogant. Right, but at the peak of his power, the big horn, right, suddenly break, broke, right. But out of that one horn, four horns came up, right, but they all point to a different direction, right. So, this is the second part of the vision, okay. Uh, is, is that clear? It's uh, easy to catch up, right, right. I'll, I'll leave the rest of the note for you to read because you've got a lot more to do. The third part of the vision is that the pattern of the goat's small horn hurling God's truth to the ground, right? Now, let us read uh, 9 uh, to 12. 9 to 12. Brother Joe, can you read this? I'll read that. Uh. Oh, okay. okay. Verse 9. From one of them, a small horn emerged. It eventually grew, grew to be very big and its power extended towards the south, the east, and towards the beautiful land. Verse 10. It grew so powerful that it attacked the armless of heaven and some of the starry host to the ground and trampled them down. Verse 11, the horn arrogantly 
asserting himself against the prince of the heavenly uh, armies. It abolished the daily sacrifices and the place of his century. Centenary was defiled. Verse 12, God's people began to turn away from him and give themselves to the power of the horn. Sin, sin replaced the daily sacrifices on account of the rebellion of the people. The horn was successful in all it's attempted to do. Truth was cast down to the ground. Amen. And now the third part, right, of the vision is that the goat, which had one horn, it broke. And out of that one, four horns came out. But one of them, one of the four, had a small horn that began to grow out of it and became very big, very powerful, right? But this horn, um, uh, the four horns go to the four different directions. But this horn uh, go to south, east, and to the beautiful land, right? The beautiful land is just another way of Daniel, of God showing Daniel that Israel, Jerusalem, is the beautiful land of God, is mm. the Eden of God, right? Mm. Now, so verse 10, this uh, uh, horn uh, of the goat, right, it, it becomes so powerful that it not only attack um, the, the people on earth, it even attack the armies of heaven. Well, the armies of heaven, of course, are the angels' army, right? It became, it, it, it's attacking angels. And even, right, hurl some of the angels to the ground. The starry holes here are the angels, right? And then what happened? Uh, this power has got spiritual power. Uh, this horn has got spiritual power. It can trample on the angels even, right? And then the horn uh, became so arrogant uh, that it, it, it raised himself up even more. But this time, against the prince of heaven's army, the prince of princess or prince, right? the, the, the interpretation is simply this prince is King Jesus, right? That there is right a power on earth that want to even conquer Jesus, right? Now, and so what happened? This power, right, the this horn from the gold um, has this power that will abolish the daily sacrifices of it of it of Israel of the Jewish people uh, in the temple. No more sacrifice, and so when Israel cannot sacrifice, what happened to their relationship with God? What happened to their sin, right? They are totally being cut off, right? And that is what this power wants to do. And then the place of his sanctuary, in other words, the temple of God, was being defiled, made unclean, right? In other words, this power have no question about wanting to shame God, destroy God, remove God, kick God out of the system, right? So that is the picture. Verse 12. And what happened to God's people? Wow, this is so dangerous. Verse 12. God's people begin to turn away from God. 
Why? Why do they turn away from God? Because to them, he said, Ayo, God's temple. How come God did not defend his own temple? God sacrifices. How come God didn't uh, you know, do something? Right? Maybe our God is not true anymore. So what happened? People turn away from God. Instead, they gave themselves to the power of the horn, right? To the power that is ruling the world at that time, right? And then what, uh, what about the daily sacrifices, right? Instead of daily sacrifices to remove their sin, right? Uh, now, sin re replaced daily sacrifices, right? Because they rebel against God. And so what, did, what, what was the horn doing, trying to do? The horn was successful in all its attempt to do. What is it that he wants to do? He wants to trample truth to the ground. Truth was cast down to the ground. Now, this is the principle. This is what is behind the picture, right? Now, as we look at the world, or as we look at the news, as we look at whatever um, situation, don't look at the surface only. Look at you know, uh, what is really going on, right? Here, uh, this the goal with that, that little horn, right, wants to destroy truth, wants to make heavenly truth a thing of the ground. It wants to, like in our language today, secularize God. No more God. Everything is no God, secular, right? Now, today, we Christians all live, right, in the context of secular world, right? And uh, like in Malaysia, uh, we call our nation secular nation because the constitution is supposed to protect, right, uh, a Malaysia that, is, that has freedom of religion. You know, people can do, can follow their own religion. Um, but in general, nothing, nothing is actually governed from a religious point of view. Although the politics will bring religious influences uh, into government. But in principle, the government is secular without God. Just like what? Just like communism, also no God, right? And all that. So that is the kind of beast that is at work in the world now. Now, the frightening thing uh, is that the horn was successful uh, in trampling down truth to the ground, right? Can you imagine the truth of the Bible uh, being uh, trampled upon, like I saw on the television uh, in Singapore, right? That um, in uh, in Sweden or and also in uh, uh, Holland or in the Netherlands, somebody burned the Quran, and then what is happening now? Thousands upon thousands of, of, of Muslims in Europe went around, right, protesting. Wow, from the television, it looks so dangerous, right? That, uh, like, the Western countries are going to be swallowed up, right? Now, behind all that, you know, whether it's burning of the Bible, burning of the of the Quran, whatever, right? Who is doing that? 
what is the uh, true picture behind? Well, the person or the one doing it is the beast, is the power at work during the present moment. Right? So today, as we look at the news, we got to always ask, right? In Malaysia, what kind of power are we dealing with, right? What kind of government and what kind of power? What kind of opposition? What kind of power, right? No, those are the kind of power that these visions, right? Four visions are telling us about. Now, the important thing is that truth. Uh, so question is, what is truth? Like Pilate asked Jesus, what is truth? Right now, here we really need help. Now, <clears throat> these uh, three parts are uh, uh, vision, right? Remember, first part of the vision is about the ram uh, with two horns. Second part of the vision is the goat with one horn, and and then it became four horns. And the third part of the vision is that one of the four horns, right? Uh, become the little horn and is be and becomes very dangerous, right? The little horn became very dangerous, even conquer heaven, right? And even destroy, right? Uh, God's truth and uh, and uh, and tramping on the ground, right? Secularize the whole world, right? Remove God. Now, so that is the direction of world power. Is it true today? Absolutely, right? Everywhere we turn to, even universities have become secular now. So from Daniel chapter 8, right, we have an interpretation. No, Angel Gabriel brought this interpretation of the vision from God, right? Uh, let us read this. We're going to read it two times, but let us read it from uh, 23 all the way to 25, right? 23 to 25. Someone read for us. I will read faster. Or... Yes, soften. When their reign came to an end, their crimes have reached their full measure. There will arise a stern king, skilled in stubbornness and tricky, trickery. He will grow in might, but not through any power of his own. He will cause amazing devastation, succeed in every undertaking, and destroy mighty ones, the saints of the Most High. But his cunning, by his cunning, he will make treasury succeed under his rule. In his own mind, he will highly exaggerate his own importance. When they, they are at ease, he will suddenly destroy many. But when he rises, rises up against the prince of all princes, he will be broken, but not by any human power. Amen. 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 Right? This is uh, God's interpretation, right? Now, when their reign comes to an end, right? In other words, when the goat uh, uh, rule over all the nations, right? Uh, coming to the end because another power has will, will come and take over them, right? Will conquer them. Well, what happened during their reign? Right? This is what we got to ask. What happened in Malaysian politics every five years, right? At the end of five years, what happened to Malaysia? Here it says, their crime have reached their full measure, right? We know one of the prime minister is now in jail, right? When he uh, came to the end of his reign, he reached his crime in full measure and he was caught, right? Now, verse 23 actually talks about the little horn. The little horn actually is about a king, right? And this king is very stern, right? Very, very fierce. But he's very skillful and very stubborn, 
and very tricky, very deceiving, right? So what does it do, right? With all these powerful uh, bags of uh, trick, well, he will grow in mind. He'll become very powerful. But look at uh, what kind of power he has got, right? What kind of skill? Well, God say, they are, the power is not of its own. It's not an earthly power. Its power is from Satan. It's a demonic power, right? And that is why the demonic power are also trying to tackle uh, the angels of heaven, right? And then, and then this this uh, king uh, will cause a lot of devastation. But every time uh, he destroy, he will succeed, right? And you destroy mighty ones. And you destroy the saints of the Most High, right? Now, the mighty ones, right, at that time are the, um, you know, the, the, the big political parties, the big military or whatever. There are no problem for, for this, this king to destroy them. But behind it all, what is this king after? This king is after the saints of the Most High, the Holy One of God, the uh, people of Israel who have given their life to God and would follow Jewish custom, Jewish laws, follow the Torah, follow the Tanakh, right? Uh, the law and the prophets, they are very religious, so religious uh, that the Jews are known all over the world, right? From Babylon time to Persia time to Greek time to Roman time, that the Jews will not bow down to any other God. They only have one God in heaven, and so what what the, what does this uh, uh, powerful king want to do? He wants to control the Jews, but cannot. So what does he do? He will destroy them, right? If you don't follow my way, I'm going to destroy your religion. I'm going to destroy your race, right? Uh, so we see that even in Hitler, right? Doing the same kind of thing. Now... And yet, this king uh, is very cunning. He is so cunning that by his deception, he will succeed. Uh, and so, by his deception, he will even trick the Jews, right, to come under his rule. You know, he will give uh, no carrot and uh, the, the stick, you know, to get them to do what he wants, right? So in his own mind, because he can get everybody under control, he will highly exaggerate his own importance. Why? Why does he need to do that? Actually, he is not that big. He cannot be bigger than God. He is not bigger than God. But now he thinks he is. He thinks he's bigger than God, right? And when they are at ease, right, who are the day, right? The day here in Daniel's heart are his own people. When his own people feel that, oh, this king can understand them or uh, allow them to do what they want. Um, they didn't know that. This king is only tricking them, right? Because when they feel that they can support this king, right, what happened? suddenly, uh, this king will destroy them, right? And then this king will also rise up against the prince of all princes, or princess, right? Now, when, when this king touch God, touch the prince, Jesus, right? What will happen? Well, this king will be broken, but not by human power, right? Now, for, 
for an, an interpretation, right? Um, this is the king uh, of uh, one of the king of Greece, right? Uh, his name is called Epiphanes, right? It, it, it's real in history. Uh, his name is called Epiphanes, meaning God manifests. He said, I am God. I am the manifestation of God on earth, right? And so by calling himself that he's attacking God, he is uh, uh, wanting to destroy everything about God, right? So when he begin to do that, what happened? God will destroy it. He was not conquered by human power because he's so powerful, right? But he died of sickness. Now, you, you have notes, right, that you can read for yourself, right? Now, um, here is something that is very, very troubling, right? God's people turned away from God, gave themselves to the power of the horn, sin replaced daily sacrifice their, of their re rebellion, and the horn was successful, and the truth was cast down. Well, what truth, right? Pilate asked, what truth, right? John 10, right? Now, the, the time came to observe the, uh, okay, okay. We're going to read from verse 23, right? Uh, all the way down, it's a long passage to so 33. 23 to 33. Can someone read for us? Father Joe, can you read this for us? Okay. The truth, John 10, 22, 25, 27, 33. The time came to observe the winter feast of renewal in Jerusalem. Jesus walked into the temple area under Solomon's coward walkway. When the Jewish leaders encircled him and said, How much longer will you keep us in suspense? Tell us the truth and clarify this for us and for us once and for all. Are you really Messiah the anointed one? Jesus answered them, I have told you the truth already, and you did not believe me. It the sounds like we have two persons reading. Huh? Do we have two persons reading? The proof of who I am is revealed by all the miracles that I do in the name of my Father. My own sheep will hear my voice and I know each one and they will follow me. I give to them the gift of eternal life and they will never be lost. And no one has the power to snatch them out of my hands. My Father, who has given them to me as his gift, is the mightiest of all. And no one has the power to snatch them from my Father's care. The Father and I are one. When they heard this, the Jewish leaders were so enraged. And they picked up rocks to stone him to death. But Jesus said, my father has empowered me to work many miracles and acts of mercy among you. So which one of them do you want to stone me for? The Jewish leaders responded, We are not stoning you for anything good you did. It's because of your blasphemy. You are just a son of Adam, but you have claimed to be God. Wow. Well, so this is the picture. What is the truth? Well, in the case of that king, right? He say he is God. Well, he's lying, right? He will trample the truth about God on the ground and he will raise up a lie, right? For the world to believe in. Now, in John chapter 10, Jesus said, the Father and I are one. Jesus said, I am God. And it is the truth. 
And yet, what happened? People want to pick up rocks to stone him to death. This is the opposite, uh, opposite situation, right? Reversal. In fact, in fact, we started with, with verse 23, right? That Jesus walked into the temple area under Solomon's cover walkway. Now, uh, Epiphanes, right, the Greek king, right, actually went to the temple area, right, and make himself king in the area, right? And uh, he, he told a lie. He trampled God's truth on the feet, right? Jesus told the truth, right? And people want to stone him. Well, God is telling us that is the kind of uh, reversal. Now, rejecting uh, the truth, uh, reject the love of the truth. There is another passage which we need to know. It's from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, right? Can someone read for us? Okay. Uh, from uh, verse 1 to 4, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now regarding. Right. Now regarding the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we plead, we plead, sorry, with you, beloved friends, beloved friends, not to be easily confused or disturbed in your mind by any kind of spirit, rumor, or letter, letter allegedly from us, claiming that the day of the Lord has already come. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way. Before that day comes, the rebellion must decur and the outlaw, the destructive son, will be revealed in his true light. Verse 4, he is the opposing counterpart who exalts himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped and who sits enthroned in God's temple and makes himself out to be a God. Verse 6, now you are aware of the ruling power so that he may be fully revealed when his time comes. For the misery of lawlessness is already active, but the one who prevails will do so until he is separated from out of the mist. Verse 8, then the outlaw will be openly revealed and the Lord will overthrow him by the breath of his mouth and bring him to an end by the dazzling manifestation of his presence. Verse 9, the presence of the outlaw is apparent by the activity of Satan, who uses all kinds of counterfeit miracles, signs, spurious wonders, and even form of evil deception. In order to deceive those who are perishing, because they rejected the love of the truth that will lead them to being safe. Amen. Amen. <laughs> no. Here is the warning, right? Here is the warning that in the world, a lot of people reject the love of the truth. A lot of people don't want to be too clear about right and wrong. They say, let us not be too hard. You know, let us compromise a bit, right? And... um. Make the world easy going, right? Now, 
because they reject the love of the truth, right? The the outlaw, right? The lawless man, right? No, he will he will act for Satan. He will he will do all kinds of counterfeit miracle signs and spurious wonders. Every form of evil. What what is the purpose? To deceive those who reject the truth, who trample the truth under feet. Now, here uh, is the warning. Now, at the coming of Jesus, right, and when Jesus gathered us to himself, right, the warning is don't be confused, don't be disturbed by any kind of spirit rumor or letter allegedly from us claiming that the day of the Lord is already here, right? Don't let anybody deceive you in any way, right? When Jesus is already here, Jesus himself would show us every news, uh, a, uh, news broadcast will show you on television, right? But before Jesus comes, before the day uh, of Jesus coming, there will be a outlaw, a lawless man, right? What will, what, what will he do? He, he'll be destructive. Uh, he opposes uh, anyone who exhort himself. Uh, he will make himself even greater uh, than everything that is called God or is being worshipped. He will make himself the God and, and he, will, he will accept worship. So what happened? He sits on the throne in God's temple. He makes himself out to be a God. Now, this picture sounds so outrageous. Who dare to call himself God? But do you know that already there are people who call themselves God in this world, right? Of course, we also know that um, uh, in the Roman Empire, right, uh, like Caesar Augustus, right, the great Caesar, he called himself the God. You no, know? people worship him, right? That is what he wants. And so, in many other places, did you know that in North Korea, uh, in North Korea, uh, the president is being worshipped as a god, right? And uh, there are many other places that um, would have this kind of uh, philosophy uh, or this kind of practice that is in the background. And verse 6 tells us, because we are aware of ruling powers, right? And, and uh, the mystery of the lawless uh, activities. Now, God say, remember, this, this lawless man will continue to do that until he became the only single champion, the only one left. He will be the greatest lawless man, right? Then, right, he will defile God. He'll do all the things about being God, right? Verse 8 tells us, the Lord will overthrow him by the breath of his mouth and bring him to an end by the dazzling manifestation of Jesus' presence. He will come in his glory and might, right, in the sky, and uh, that is how uh, the uh, lawless man will be destroyed. Now, the principle we are to understand is that only Jesus can claim to be God. Nobody else. That is the truth, right? The one who wants to claim he's God, we need to be very careful and not give in to them, right? Now, let us go to uh, number uh, point number five, the timeline for.
for the rededication of the temple in Jerusalem sanctuary, right, will be purified and sacrifice restored. Now, let us read, right, Daniel 8, 13 and 14. Okay, I'll read. Okay, please. Then I heard a holy one speaking. Another holy one asked the first one, the wonderful number, how long will it be until this vision is fulfilled in relation to the daily sacrifice, the rebellion that causes desolation, the handling over of the sanctuary, and the trampling underfoot of the host of God's people? He answered, for 2,300 evenings and mornings, then the sanctuary will be purified. Amen. 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 Well, for the Jews, for the children of Israel, right, the, um, the temple and temple sacrifices are the heart of uh, their religion, right? Uh, when the, the temple is destroyed, when sacrifices cannot be offered, right? They are lost. So they ask, the God that we worship, right? When would you restore that? No? And he actually gave an answer. 2,300 evening and mornings, right? In the Old Testament, in Genesis chapter 1, no, there was evening and morning the first day. Evening and morning, the second day. Evening and morning, all through seven days, right? So 2,300 uh, evening and morning could mean 1,500, um, what is that, 1,000, 1,150 days, 1,150, right? Uh, now, whatever the number, the, the important point is this, that there will be a time where uh, God's own temple, God's own sacrifices will be brought back. It will be brought back, right? But may not be like the way uh, the Jewish people think of it today, right? Now, we will come to that later, right, as we look at this. But it is important to know that. Now, in Daniel 8, 26, the angel say, the explanation of the vision you had about the evenings and morning sacrifices is absolutely true. Seal up the vision, for it concerns the distant future. Well, God is saying to them that this uh, concern for coming back to God, uh, for worship of God, is absolutely correct. You, you, the world needs that. But being such a small nation and the power that can control you, Israel you don't know how it can possibly have the temple back. Even until today, Israel does not have a temple, right? But the number given, 2300, zero, zero, uh, God say is about a distant future, right? Not now. So that's all. That is all that there is, right? So now we're going to look at how Jesus explained. Uh, so we have daily sacrifice, yearly sacrifices, and all those. Now, look at the way Jesus explained. Can someone read Matthew 24? Uh, this is also quite long. Matthew 24. Okay. Uh, Jennifer, can you read this for us? Jennifer. Okay. <laughs> When you witness what Daniel prophesied, the disgusting destroyer taking its stand in the holy place, then those in the land of Judah 
must escape to the higher ground. So pray that your escape will not be during the winter months or on a Sabbath. This will be a time of great misery beyond the magnitude of anything the world has ever seen or ever will see. Unless God limited those days, no one would escape. But because of his love for those chosen to be his, he will shorten the time of trouble. And you will hear reports from some saying, look, he has re returned. Don't believe it. The appearing of the Son of Man will burst forth with the brightness of lightning, sh shining, shining from the eastern sky to the west. How do birds of prey know where the dead body is? They know, they just know instinctively, and so you will know when I appear. Then immediately, this is what will take place. The sun will be darkened and the moon give us give no light. The stars will fall from the sky and all the cosmic powers will be shaken. Then the sign announcing the Son of Man will appear in the sky and all the nations of the earth will mourn over him. And they will see the Son of Man appearing in the clouds of heaven, revealed with mighty power, great splendor and glory. And he will send his messengers with the loud blast of the trumpet. And with a great voice, they will gather his beloved chosen ones from the four winds, from one and of heaven in the other. Amen. Amen. Here, um, Jesus himself, right, pointed to Daniel's prophecy about the, the, the abomination of destruction, right, or the disgusting destroyer who will stand in the holy place, right, why does he stand in a holy place? Because this, this uh, disgusting right, sinner, lawless man, wants to be God, right? wants to be king. Right? Now, the, the, uh, the prophecy from Jesus right, is that that is so dangerous. Right? The misery beyond anything the world has ever seen or will see. Now, that is the, the climax of uh, persecution, right? Now, what will God do? God will limit those days, right? Because God loves those chosen to be His and will shorten the time of trouble, right? Now, how will God shorten the time of trouble? By sending the, His Son, by the appearing of Jesus. Now, again, verse 23, when people say, look, Jesus has returned, Jesus himself say, don't believe it. He said, my appearing as a son of man will burst forth with brightness of lightning shining from the eastern sky to the west. Well, that kind of uh, arrival, right? Uh, is like so bright, so uh, obvious, so grand, right? Everybody will see. There is no need to to, to listen to wh whoever, right? Jesus himself will make very sure that everybody will see it now. So there's this question Jesus asks, right? How do birds of prey know where the dead body is? We know that vultures uh, is a bird that eats dead body, right? And vultures can smell. They know where the dead bodies are. They just know it by instinct. Well, this is a very, very um, a loaded uh, question. Why did Jesus talk about the birds of prey? Why did Jesus talk about the dead bodies? Because that is what's going to happen, right? Before his return. There will be so much persecution. So many of his own people will, will, will die, right? And so 
uh, Jesus is telling us, we will instinctively know about his appearance. When we look up the sky and see the light, see the glory, see Jesus coming in the clouds, we know that is Jesus, right? So we need to practice. We need to really believe it, right? And, and even more than that, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give light, the star will fall from the sky, cosmic powers will be shaken, well, to, there will be heavenly signs, right? And uh, it's interesting that we should we should uh, really rehearse this over and over, right? When Jesus comes and appears in the sky, what will happen to people all over the world in the nations of the earth? They will cry. Why would they cry for Jesus? Why do you think people should cry for Jesus? Because now they see he is the real king. They see he is the real Messiah. All the others are pretenders, but they have neglected. They have persecuted. They have, they have nailed him to the cross. They have not believed him. So now they are mourning, right? Because they have done wrong. They will see the Son of Man appear uh, and reveal in uh, glory, power, and splendor, right? And uh, verse 31 is so encouraging. Jesus, right, will then send out his angels, the messengers, right? And there will be shofar. Uh, and from the, the blowing of the shofar, the angels will go and gather all the beloved of God from the four corners of the world, right? So remember, the days are coming when there will be so much persecution where we will be hiding somewhere, but the angels will come and say, look, Jesus is here, I'm gathering you. Are you one of them? Right? We need to say, yes, 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 Lord. I've read your word. I believe your word. I am prepared. I'm ready for it. Amen. Now, number six, Angel Gabriel interprets the terrifying end-time vision, right? Right, chapter 8, 15 to 17. All right. Someone read. I will read. Okay. And then chapter 8, uh, verse 15 to 17. While I, Daniel, was pondering... The the vision I had seen, suddenly there appeared before me one who looked like a man. Then I heard the voice of someone calling out over the waters of the Olai Kenna. Gabriel helped this man understand the meaning of his vision. As the angel Gabriel came uh, closer to where I was standing, I was so terrified that I fell face down on the ground. Then he said to me, Daniel, son of man, you need to understand that your vision referred to the time of the end. Amen. Amen. Now, here is the question, right? Like this picture. You know, mm -hmm. this is Angel Gabriel, right? In gold, right? And here is Daniel. What happened to him? Right, he is so uh shaken, right? He falls on the ground. Now, the question now is no Daniel is told, right? This vision is not for now. Don't don't be so scared. It's about the end time. You will not be around then. Daniel was so fearful, terrified, he fell down. Because here is Daniel, right? having seen the vision, having some idea of the vision, he is already so shocked that the Jewish people, the children of God, Israelites, are going to face so much persecution. Right? He was just devastated by that. Now, let us look at the rest of the of the interpretation, right? Vision of Medes and Persian, 
and vision of Greece refer to a pattern of wrath in the end times. Right. Let us read 18 to 22. Hello, someone read. Brother, Ken, Brother Ken, can you read this? Uh, Brother Ken. Sister Lorna, can you read this for us? Thank you. Daniel 8, verse 18 to 22. When he spoke with me, I lost consciousness and passed out. But he took hold of me and raised me to my feet. Listen, he said, and I will tell you what will take place in the time of wealth. For the vision patterns to the appointed time of, of the end. The ram that you saw with two long horns represents the kingdom of the Medes and the Greece, Persian. uh, Greeks and Persians. Me Persian. and Persians, right. The male god represented the kingdom of Greek and the big horn on its forehead is the first king of the Greek empire. As for the horn that was broken off and replaced by four permanent horns, this is significant that four other kingdoms will rise from its midst, from its midst, but their combined power will not be as great as the first. Amen. 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 Well, this is the picture, right? Uh, now, so 20, uh, 18 to 23, uh, Daniel uh, is given interpretation, right? The ram represents Medes and Persian. That is the second part, right? We have Babylon, Medes and Persian. And the third one is Greece, right? The big horn, the male goat, right? Now, and uh, what happened, right? What happened? This horn, uh, 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 the big horn is the first king. And from the history of the world, this first king is Alexander the Great, right? He's a young man. But he has great power and he has a very powerful strategy, right, in uh, his military empire. Now, he is so quick in uh, conquering, you know, so many nations. He went all the way up to India, right? And uh, apparently he died of uh, a, a malaria. <clears throat> now... Well, God actually killed him, right? Now, and then he was replaced by four prominent horns, right? Now, the four horns uh, are not as powerful as uh, Alexander the Great himself, right? Now, so in the future, at the fullness of sin, a stern, deceitful king destroy man, destroy many and Israel, God's holy people, right? We read this just now. Let us read it again to try to capture uh, what is the interpretation. Someone read for us. Sister Salina, can you read this for us? Okay. okay. Uh, when their reign comes to an end and their crimes have reached their full measure, there will arise a stern king, skilled in stubbornness and trickery. 
He will grow in might, but not through any power of his own. He will cause amazing devastation, succeed in every undertaking, and destroy mighty ones, the saints of the Most High. By his cunning, he will make treachery succeed under his rule. In his own mind, he will highly exaggerate his own importance. When they are at ease, he will suddenly destroy many, but he will rise up against the prince of all princes, he will be broken, but not by any human power. The explanation of the vision you had about the evening and morning sacrifices is absolutely true and seal up the vision for it concerns the distant future. Amen. 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 So, um, history... Uh, this history is already fulfilled, right? This prophecy, this vision is already done, right? Today, we look back at the history of the Persians, the history of, of Greece. From the history book, we are reading what the Bible already said, right? And how these powerful nations are very cruel, right? in treat, treating uh, the people they conquered. Right? But as powerful as they are, right, they are not satisfied to just conquer nations. Behind it all, there are two things right, that uh, uh, we need to really take to heart. One thing is that they want to destroy truth. All the truth from God, right? They want to destroy. Secondly, they want to destroy the truth of all truth. That is, only Jesus is God on earth, right? No other person is God on earth, right? And they even want to destroy that. The, the, the problem is that when the human power, right, pretends to be God, play God, right, they do not have the wisdom of God to govern peacefully, govern in righteousness, in justice. So what happened to the world? Like we see now in Ukraine, what kind of peace, what kind of justice what kind of righteousness? There isn't any, right? And so the message we get is that like the four beasts, so powerful, so quick, and yet all they are after is power struggle. They are fighting to take control and control others. They are they are. They're using their power to make themselves the one and only, right? Now, this kind of idea is being spread in the world. Uh, like the American dream is very much like that. Now China also has a Chinese dream. And I don't know what other nations have other dreams, right? What is the Malaysian dream? Well, all these dreams are nothing but the same as make yourself strong, right? You can do it. You can be president. You can do whatever you want, right? Uh, well, is that true? Right? Now, God say, we are all being influenced at that. The fact that we have heard the gospel, received Jesus as our king in the center of our life. Has it changed us and not be like the world, wanting to be the most powerful to control others? Now, if we are continuing to be like that, then we are not of God. If we are of God, then... Our life is not about conquering. Our life is not about 
a power struggle. In fact, we know that God is the person, right, who raised people to power, and God is the person who pulls people down from power, right? It's not by human. Now, it is in this context that we need to really understand, right, uh, the last part. Dazzle and sick, overwhelmed and shocked by this vision beyond human understanding. What happened to Daniel now, right? Let us read uh, the last verse. I, Daniel, was dazed and lay sick for several days. Then I got up and went back to serve the king. I was perplexed by the vision, for it seemed beyond understanding. Well, <clears throat> what David, De Daniel was to know was that God would still maintain a people for himself who would be purified and made white and tried or refined by all his dealings while the wicked still pursue their evil way in the darkness. Only the wise uh, would have the capacity to understand. This solemn fact is stated very clearly in 1 Corinthians 2.14. So Daniel had to go his way without any clear answer to this question. Daniel may not know any details, but he could be assured that blessing lay at the end of uh, for the people of God. We have the same assurance only we have it in larger measure and fuller detail. However, searching uh, God's uh, judgment upon man's evil for the humble and patient, there is always blessing at the end. Another fact lies embedded in these words. God acts, whether in judgment or in blessing, in stages. He did so with Israel in Egypt. He did so again when the church was inaugurated. There was the 40 days of his repeated manifestation in resurrection, followed by 10 days of waiting, and then formation of the church by the shedding forth of the Holy Spirit. So it will be in the last days when the kingdom of God arrives in manifested power. And the last word to Daniel is one of full assurance until it comes. Rest is to be his portion. After a life of exceptional unrest and strain, and when it does come, he has an appointed lot in which he will stand and we venture to think that his lot will not be a small one. Well, Daniel needed rest. So too, we need rest, right? Hebrews 4, 1 to 16, right? Tell us the opposite of violence in power struggle is rest in God's rest. In persecution and spiritual warfare, rest in God to do His work through us who welcome Him as our King in the center of our life. Our love are no more about ourselves, but fully about our King, His love and His kingdom advancement. So I encourage you, please read Hebrews chapter 4, right? Verse 1 all the way down to verse 16, right? These are very, very important and very, very uh, powerful secrets. When we face pressure, when we face struggle, when we face people trembling upon us, when we face all the oppositions, what do we do? Fight back or we find the peace of God that passes all human understanding 
right? And rest in God's way of promoting us, God's way of opening the door, right? Trust God and talk to God about our situation and let God use us for his kingdom purpose that through us, thousands upon thousands would come to know King Jesus is the real king on earth. King Jesus loved us and died for us that everyone can receive King Jesus and have kingdom life. Well, that is our Lord. That is what God has given to us. And through these visions, right, we have a, a bigger picture of what the world looks like, what our world is about, and how we should not right, follow the ways of the world, but stand firm as God's children rested in his love and his wisdom and the kingdom. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that in your wonderful goodness, you show us once again that what you have done on the cross for us, you have already prepared us for the worst situation on earth, that you have your broken body and your shed blood to assure us that we are under your care. We have your broken body to make our body whole. We have your shed blood to cleanse us of all our sins and bring us back into a new covenant with you. Lord, no matter what happens in this world, we have your bread. We have your wine. We have your presence with us. We have you, Emmanuel, God with us every day and every moment. Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 So tonight, as we go through these um, visions of Daniel, God is preparing our hearts, right? And lay the truth line by line, you no, know, uh, precept by precept. Let us go back, reread, read. let the Holy Spirit you know, strengthen us, right, in all this so that um, we are ready, ready for the end of the world, right? ready for Jesus' return. Amen. Amen. Mm. Thank you, Reverend Koo. Well, God bless you. <laughs> Thank you and good night. Yeah. Thank you okay. very much. All right.